live. Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the second episode of Alumni Talks with our recommended practitioners. I'm your host, Sanjana Purovit from IJAS. And today we are in conversation with a clinical psychologist, Urja Dagya. I would quickly like to introduce about our organization. Uh, we intend to train therapists who are better trained to not only take problems, but with the normal them to lead happier and more fulfilling life. Before I begin, I would also like to mention our MHP challenge and initiative to help practitioners requesting people to seek help before it's too late. I would also like to request everyone watching us to start a watch party on Facebook so that your friends and family can also benefit from it. You can also ask us questions on the comment section and we'll surely answer to them. So um, about Urja Daga. She has done her MA in clinical psychology. She is a clinical therapist. She is currently leading a suicide prevention helpline in Gujarat and has done her basic course in REBT and CBT. So, Urja, can you tell us something about yourself? Um, hi, Sanjana. I have hi. missed. Yes, sir. So, as my name is Vijay Dhaikya and uh, I am a clinical psychologist. I am zero four health helpline, and uh, mm -hmm. we have a thing. And uh, apart you from that, uh, I do. Okay. Did you get what I said, or do I have to repeat everything again? I missed you. Full tower. Okay. So can you tell us about yourself? Okay, fine. Hmm. So I am a clinical psychologist. I'm from Ahmedabad and uh, I have been working past six years in this field. Uh, at present, I am uh, with GVK EMRI and uh, uh, in GVK MRI, we have this segment called Suicide Prevention Helpline under Health Helpline. I am having that project. I have a team of two counselors. Uh, they take care of the calls and I intervene when there are difficult calls or there are difficulties. Um, so yeah, I'm Masters in Clinical Psychology and it's been six years that I am practicing. Um, about me, I'm happy go lucky go person. <laughs> Take life yes. as it comes. That's beautiful. Thank you. And I think it's because I'm faster or I'm maybe forgetting things. <laughs> okay. okay. So, uh, can you tell us that uh, what what are the types of cases that you handle? So um, I see uh, cases of which are of clinical type, um, mm -hmm. of course, uh, social type and uh, educational wise as well. But more or less, you know, I see cases which are more into social uh, uh, social environment where they have relationship issues, they have family related issues. Also, there are people who come and talk about, uh, you know, if they have work pressure issues. So mainly I deal with adults and uh, uh, the cases which uh, the clients which I see are more of, uh, you know, a control of uh, young age uh, very, uh, very, very soon, you know, they, they live under stress and uh, a lot of pressure. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And uh, so, what are the kinds of cases that the students tell you? What are the concerns? Can you share something on that? Okay. So, 
so uh, on the helpline we get the calls which are different it it varies from education to economic to family related to domestic violence to you know extramarital affairs all these calls uh, we receive and we gather them into listening them out of um, the language patterns i have learned i uh, you know forward it to my uh, colleagues and they implement uh, into their counseling with me when i see personal clients i um is a bad network connection <laughs> yeah i'll see that now i'm back again yes okay so uh, with me um mm-hmm. as i said that i'm seeing uh, you know the variety of uh, the cases i would uh, do you want me to share a case right now mm-hmm. um yes you can okay so um it's so whole time is didn't uh, very well uh, because uh, this girl she is she is a very uh, uh, very intelligent very talented but uh, she had this fear of depression sickness phobia and she she used to take sessions with me but uh, one day she came like suddenly and she's like i need to talk to you i said okay what happened so she told me that uh, you know there's uh, this uh, family trip we are going to and uh, i don't want to certainly go for it i have uh, you know problems with uh, i don't like these people i don't know i don't know if i can be you know very with my all that and i am i'm not comfortable you know so i said okay if that's the problem we can still work uh, with uh, communication skills and then she's like yeah but it's uh, not much problem i think we can deal with like still i don't want to go i said okay what, what is the reason that you don't want to go is it uh, because it was a road trip she had to go by car and uh, uh, then sickness i said oh your voice I is free so that how oh bad <laughs> it's raining and i'm trying to have full network my voice is going i don't know what is happening anyway hmm. uh she was going on a road am trip. i audible now yes just be here okay so <laughs> yes so she uh she said it's a road trip and i have i have a, a motion sickness i'm phobic by uh, hmm. traveling of you know road traveling i said okay hmm. fine so then you know i i did all the procedure as we do in our um, you know through our process in chcp also uh, you know mm-hmm. the whole procedure we follow i followed the procedure i took all the information i did one hypnodrama with her then i did future progression with her and uh, uh, it was just a day before she came so i was a bit skeptical that whether will it work or not work but um she went she came back after 15 days she saw me and she she came with such a bright smile and so much so much happiness and relaxation on her face she's like thank you so much because so severe motion sickness that i could not even sit for an hour where i traveled from gujarat i'm the bus to mm-hmm. goa which is almost 18 mm-hmm. hours of journey and she's like mm-hmm. i enjoyed every bit of my that journey everything which i have always missed on the road the scenery the air the uh, roads the beauty of the roads whatever i have missed i have like cherished every moment of this road trip uh, you know uh, because of you know what we did you know and so mm-hmm. that is why i remember this is because it it was just the one uh, you know the very next day it gave the result and a very wow. effective result that oh, this can work so well if 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 
our client is willing to work towards it and if he if the client is very keen that okay i want to work on it i want to sort out this issue so firm and so determined that yes i want to deal with it and i will deal with it deal with it come what may so what i see is if it was not yet cp i don't know how i would have got up this effective result beautiful and yes i agree to you that uh, you know when the client is is willing to do everything so it it is easy for both the client and the therapist right right agreed agreed so this is yes. one case which i remember very very and and close to my heart because it gave the instant result which i also did not expected uh there's one more girl a uh, young yeah, I mean, uh, uh, can i share this incident as well sure sure okay so there there was this one young girl um, uh, somewhat around 13 or 14 years old uh hmm. the cultural background was a very low culture i wouldn't say low but uh, a very orthodox cultural background um hmm. and she came along with her mom and her auntie uh, to the center and uh, her mom and auntie told that she saw her father pass away in front of her eyes uh unke culture mein aisa hota hai ki when somebody dies you really really have to cry even if you don't feel like crying you have to cry um because you know that's how you get over your sadness your grief this girl was 13 14 years old but she did not die from the day her father passed away so they came and they said ma'am humko samajh mein nahi aa raha you know what should we do why she is not crying and she is not feeling anything mm-hmm. she was completely emotionless so mm-hmm. uh, she came for the first session and uh, she just uh, talked normally you know you talk about yourself like that she came she mm-hmm. uh, spoke about herself what is she doing what she likes to do and all mm-hmm. um, and then they went when she came for the second session she hmm. somehow uh, uh, she was uh, feeling very connected with me so when she hmm. came for the second session she came and she spoke to me she's like i like it you know i like talking to you and all um then i told her okay so what is the problem you know because when it was the first time i was also a little bit uh, uh, a skeptical to touch that part of her life that where she has not expressed that thing so this time when i saw that she is very friendly with me i consented her i said okay would you like to tell me what happened that day and why is it that you couldn't cry i mean if you are comfortable you tell me you share it with me so she started saying that this happened the whole incident she uh, started sharing it with me explaining that what happened what she did how you know she tried to save him but 13 years old girl you know she couldn't and she saw that her father was lifeless there it was so painful for her but because she saw everything she couldn't even take it out so that day again she relived everything everything from you know the beginning to the end and end of the session i me being a counselor we being a counselor try to keep our emotions and ourselves so uh, you know at uh, balanced but listening to this even i had little tears in my eyes her mother and her auntie were crying and i did not wanted to show her that i had tears in my eyes so i you know i i hid it but in the very next moment when i am looking at her she's crying she's just mm-hmm. crying and i feel that the part of uh, you know not the complete hypnotherapy but the process and you know the part of uh, i would say hypnotherapy led me to visualize her that you know what happened and it's okay to cry it is fine if you feel like crying just cry there's nothing wrong about it and after that she uh, she expressed herself she expressed all her pain in that room almost it took 3 hours that day the second session it was 3 hours but uh, the moment she left that room 
she had a smile on her face and i think that was uh, my you know i i feel that that was uh, my reward for sitting and listening her for three long hours um since then whenever she came to the center she made sure that come to me say hi to me and she became that young little cheerful girl mm. who's uh, you know a 14 year old girl who became suddenly a 20 year or 25 year old girl now she's become to herself mm. that okay she's 14 year old girl going to the school smiling and laughing and i felt so good after seeing her you know recovering like this so i mean there are many cases i can go on and on and on if you don't interrupt me i'll just think, keep thinking about another case and start talking that's okay that we want to know okay so when you say uh, hypnodrama so most of the audience may not be knowing about what is hypnodrama so can you explain us in short that what is hypnodrama okay uh hypnodrama is the process where uh technically the process starts you know when we go into the relaxation we go into the trance and mm-hmm. we if i have some uh, uh, some unresolved thing with some person with particular situation or towards my work or towards myself it could be anything it could not be only you know restricted to one person or one thing or one particular incident it could be anything anyone it could be towards the self also uh you relax yourself you go to the uh, the complete relax and trance mode think mm-hmm. about the whole incident and see it as a third person that what is happening or what had happened now when you observe it from the third person's point of view one you know that what you have uh, uh, done wrong or how you can do it in a better way in hmm. hypnodrama process what you do is you actually then become that person in in the moment and try to express whatever you wanted to express which was unresolved um you express it and you also try after expressing everything after exhaustion of all your negative energy uh, you can also uh, try seeing the future that this is or this is how the better future i want to see after coming out of this process so uh, <laughs> hypnodrama with the future progression i think uh, i would uh, say that uh, i express mm. myself i am uh, relieving my stress or uh, whatever mm. emotion or negativity i have and then i am also solving it not just leaving it right there mm. i want to solve it so i want to see what is the result what is my goal mm. the the solution right mm. so in after once i i, I uh, express i also uh, see myself that i am doing better and i'm progressing towards a better uh, solution resolvement of this situation where i uh, feel that i should not feel the same or if i feel the same i know the answer what i should be doing uh, did i answer your question yes you did it was beautiful okay thank you and uh, my next question is that uh, what are the different kinds of approaches that different kinds of approaches that i use so as yes. uh, hypnodrama and future progression is my favorite just like mm-hmm. that i have six step reframing which is also one mm-hmm. of my favorite also a uh, uh, technique like hoponopono uh as well as oh, these are the uh, the cognitive hypnotic uh, coaching uh, mm-hmm. techniques i'm talking about apart from that mm-hmm. i also uh, practice cognitive behavior therapy rational emotive behavior therapy in my uh, uh, counseling sessions it, it depends on the intensity severity of the case that uh, mm-hmm. what it requires if it requires you know if it is done on a very primary level then i would uh, definitely try uh, uh, cbt which is more on behavior modification with a one 
person is you know um, can identify is in a place to discriminate and can take a better decision it's just that he is because he is very aware and conscious about things is coming and talking so cbt is the best uh, for them but the per- person who is on a severe level then um, i use cognitive hypnosis and then of course the cbt um, rebt as well so i uh, i would prefer to use all kinds of approach together not just stick to one because i believe that you know sticking to one uh, therapy or one approach um, constraints uh, your ability and also you have to think if the client is getting result or not because my main mm-hmm. focus is that if the client is getting result then it's fine nothing uh, uh, matters more than that if the client is mm-hmm. not getting result from uh, hypnosis then i would try some different uh, approach like okay doing activities like hardcore activities i would give them homeworks to do i would um, also uh, this one thing i think i forgot to mention that you know i give them the mantra mantra uh, okay. uh, to repeat to themselves you know that uh, uh, whenever you feel negative or whenever you uh, think that you cannot do anything something mm. which is push uh, pull mm. you down you know so try telling you, yourself this mantra which always push you forward and you know not let you down will give you a positive mm-hmm. energy and i think um, i'm not just saying uh, uh, but uh, it has given tremendous results who have practiced the mantra technique and uh, even mm-hmm. i myself have practiced it in my life mm-hmm. uh, at a very young age and uh, uh after knowing chcp it has become more uh, systematic and more uh, you know uh, technical but when i was a young once um, uh, once uh, i got a very less mark in my maths and i was like oh maths is something which i cannot uh, you know cannot deal with so my father mm-hmm. uh, used to go to dr bharat chandra session and in that he got this we lost her so meanwhile if any one of you have any question so ask us hello yes yes hello yes yes i'm back am i back yes yes hello i cannot hear you hello i can no can you hear me now yes uh hello Just, just one. You all can ask us questions if you all have any questions, and we'll sort the answer to them. Hello. Hello. I still cannot hear you. Your audio is gone. I'll log in again. Log in again. That's what you are saying. I will. I will do that. हेलो हेलो यू आर ऑन म्यूट हेलो कैन यू हियर मी कैन यू हियर मी नाउ Okay, I'll log in again. Seems the connection is flaky. Hello. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> So, so you were saying that your father visited uh, some uh, lectures ha so from there he got that you know you can do it wala 
uh, formula. Hmm. So I was, hmm. I think I remember I was in sixth or seventh standard, and uh, hmm. she told me that uh, whenever you go for study or whenever you start your study, keep telling yourself hmm. that uh, you know everything. 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 And also hmm. tell yourself in front of the mirror, which I found it very silly even at that age. But hmm. uh, anyway, I did it because I wanted a mask, and I was young, so not to argue, I did that. And I, I didn't believe my results. The next exam, I got thirty nine out of forty, and I was like, wow. okay, <laughs> this works. <laughs> this is working. <laughs> Yeah, this is working. This is uh, this is not just you know say it's uh, say mm-hmm. something which is you just say it or for the sake of doing it. You have I I I would again say that if you believe or if you want mm-hmm. to change it um, consciously, then your unconscious is always there to help you to give you the better, even better, and every time the best results. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that was the. reason what is the question you were talking about <laughs> so we were asking the different approaches that you use yes 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 also yes. Uh, counseling a normal counseling session also helps in uh, you know few cases where uh, mm. someone just wants to come and talk they might not mm. want to uh, you know uh, any solution i mm. try asking them if they want a solution that's my first question because if mm. they are like no i just want to talk so first few session also goes like that but then later mm. they come that uh, no no we want a solution so um that uh, technique just the talking technique you know where uh, mm. you just give someone a comfort a place mm. uh, to express themselves without uh, giving them any solutions you are just there for them hmm. so that also works so yeah talking therapy i think i would say my abbreviated word okay so uh, urja we have a question from ajun okay. sir so she has uh, asked that uh, in india what educational qualifications do we need to register as a clinical psychologist and which body is to register so uh, uh recently i have uh, uh, seen that rci was up till now rci rehabilitation council of india is the the only uh, institution is been known for registering uh, yourself as a clinical psychologist you got to do courses uh, which is offered by rci or rci affiliated university also you should be a masters in clinical psychology uh and after that you should have this extensive tra- uh, the experience if you have 5 plus years of experience then you can become a rci registered psychologist even if you have not done anything from rci offered courses but for that you should have a 5 to minimum 5 to 6 years of experience uh so far i know i am aware of if the rules have changed i haven't seen it recently uh apart from that if you do mphil phd definitely uh you can call yourself a clinical psychologist so recently only i started telling myself very confidently that i am a clinical psychologist because i am 6 years of experience and i have already applied for uh, uh, uh i mean in the process uh, to apply mm-hmm. for rci registration there is another uh, body i have come across uh, which says bharatiya psychology uh, association something mm-hmm. in, in on on those words there's a uh, this mm-hmm. association there also you can register as a clinical psychologist but i haven't yet uh, go through the whole process but minimum uh, minimum you have to have masters in clinical psychology to be a psychologist मोस्ट In all your cases, like this is like ये तो करना ही है. 
हाँ सो यू नो मतलब कोई भी एक्सटेंसिव थेरापी करो एक्सटेंसिव टेक्निक कर लो बट आई लव दिस अ वेरी स्मॉल वेरी स्मॉल एक्टिविटी ऑफ सी एच सी पी विच इज ओपन ओपन नो एक्टिविटी आई आई होप आई एम प्रोनाउंसिंग इट राइट आई लव दैट टेक्निक सो मच बिकॉज इट डजेंट रिक्वायर फॉर यू टू ब्रीद इन ब्रीद आउट इट डजेंट रिक्वायर रिक्वायर यू टू यू नो गो टू अ क्वाइट प्लेस इट डजेंट रिक्वायर एनी प्लेस और एनी थिंग यू आर जस्ट सिटिंग समवेर एंड इफ यूर यू नो फाइंडिंग योर सेल्फ दैट यू आर ओवर थिंकिंग और यू आर फीलिंग गिल्टी अबाउट समथिंग यू जस्ट स्टार्ट डूइंग दैट एक्टिविटी यू नो यू जस्ट स्टार्ट टेलिंग योर सेल्फ दैट यू नो आई एक्सेप्ट माई सेल्फ आई लव माई सेल्फ और who said person you are thinking about you know about that person that i accept i forgive i am sorry and i love you you know so that is a very powerful technique which keeps you on toes uh, to be you know positive towards so unless and until my clients finds a mantra i tell them okay do this that i accept myself i forgive myself i am sorry myself and i love you myself so somehow it it does its effect on you know on your thought process because sometimes you just feel that you are doing something like why am i doing it it's not giving me any result you may not you may not notice the result but people around you who definitely definitely see the change in you there could be a minor change as well but change is a change always and it's a positive why not accept it and it does have a good effect on people and i believe that people who are going through a guilt uh is very useful this technique is very useful for them this is such a beautiful technique yeah i love it this is my favorite and of course too. as i said six step reframing so uh, yes. it's a little longer process uh mm-hmm. to install the answers that yes no i don't know and i don't want to tell you this answers uh but once you install it and once you start practicing it towards you know your uh, in your life in your client's life your client mm-hmm. also become uh, a bit of independent when they are in uh, uh, you know certain situation where they cannot speak to you at, you know immediately or they cannot come to you immediately I think six step mm-hmm. reframing can help them a little to overcome that momentarily extensive anxiety at that point of time. Hmm. Do you want me to explain more on six step reframing? Yes, if you can. <laughs> um so uh this is uh It, as i said it's a long process is it, it also includes your positive intention it also includes your it's the core focus is completely on unconscious mind your subconscious mind or your unconscious mind plus hmm. uh, at this uh, technique you come to know that your mind has a creative part as well and hmm. your creative part also has a positive intention and also has a negative intention but we more focus on positive intention so hmm. uh uh this is a very beautiful and a very tricky technique where you know you ask your mind okay i have this problem uh, is there hmm. any positive intention behind it your mind will show you the signal yes or yes or no <clears throat> then you proceed further okay so hmm. if there is a solution do you know what all the solutions are there you and in the, the the beauty of this uh, technique is you may know the solution hmm. or you may not know the solution hmm. and even if you don't know the solution your problem gets resolved wow <laughs> so uh, that gives you the answer and the insight and why it gives you the answer or why your problem gets resolved is because unconsciously we are we we are not thinking about it kya hota hai ki hum log usko question karke sawal puch ke chhod diya ki ha tumko pata hai iska answer iska kya hoga aage to bolega ha pata hai theek hai abhi you consciously don't know ki yaar ye kaise karega pata nahi ठीक है नाउ यू आर बिजी इन योर डे टू डे लाइफ 
and suddenly after two days, three days, or maybe on the same day or day end, you're just like, "Are you problem? It's so easy. That's how it's all over." Hmm. It's and you you are not working for it, but you're un- so. Okay. So you are saying yes. I I'll log in again. Okay. Meanwhile, if anyone of you have any questions, you can ask us. So good evening, Kalani and Juniper. Uh, do we need? Okay. So, um, Osa, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Perfect. So Juniper has asked you that uh, do we need to work with the setup to register for RCI? Ah, uh, technically yes. Okay. Yes, you should have that clinical experience to be a clinical psychologist. Perfect. So you are saying that uh, we know the solutions, we know the answers. Just yeah, thing. but we. Uh, okay, this can get this setting. It's fine. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So, so, so it part is that you know the or you, even if you don't know the solution, your problem hmm. gets resolved and that becomes automatically. Sometimes your mind plays trick. Also, they may it may not give you the answer, but eventually, I'm sure uh, you know that uh, give you the result. that give you the results mm-hmm. and after all you have your therapist who has mm-hmm. taught you the technique it's better to ask your therapist or your uh, uh, counselor that okay i am stuck here now tell me what to do so yes you and always get that and it's always yes. important to be in touch with your counselor so my next Definitely. question yes so my next question is that what are the challenges that you have faced before learning cpp so yeah Oh, what was okay. the challenges? So challenges before. Uh, before learning CSCP. It's four years, and I'm thinking about it. Okay, what was it? Because it's a four years. I'm so habituated to CSCP that I cannot think of mm-hmm. anything else. Um. Mm-hmm. So before, when I was uh, uh, I was working with a doctor or psychiatrist, uh, um, I was just following his pattern. I was following what he was, uh, you know, asking me to do apart from what we have learned uh, uh, during our uh, during our post grad and graduation. Hmm. Um, so um, I I found that it was so monotonous counseling I was doing. There was only I hmm. had CBT and RBT and everything was such a traditional. Uh, approach i was uh, following uh, that uh, would sometimes give you a uh, positive result sometimes would not give you the result but what was constant during all this time i found is my patience that okay i had the patience even when i was doing uh, the uh, uh, traditional counseling where we used to take history We used to. We still do. We still do take history, but that history was like sometimes you are in north, sometimes you are in south, sometimes you are in west. But right now we have that system that you systematically follow the process. Even uh, I mean I won't say that it was not systematic, but it is different. You know, even when we uh, do MSC mental state evaluation, right? So even in that as well, you know, we have certain. Uh, Parameters and certain segments to ask questions. So that also, mm-hmm. but in that also we used to because it's a lengthy process. MSC is a very lengthy mm-hmm. process. So you mm-hmm. only think, okay, this person has this many problem. I should ask uh, more questions related to this. So um, mm-hmm. it was more paper pencil and uh, you know only. Um, passive uh, counseling i would uh, uh, say that i was doing also apart from that i used to do test like personality mm. test pet uh, aptitude test so the stress test intelligence test because i was working with doctor so he used to provide us this test to do 
and they are like, okay, you are a psychologist, you have studied this, do the test. So sometimes you may not get a chance to counsel, but you just mm-hmm. perform the test, you give the statistics and uh, your work is done. So that also has been done. But once, you know, you have one expertise or you are expert in one or, you know, more therapies, you uh, open up yourself or you open up a uh, uh, wide range of uh, uh, techniques for yourself, for your betterment, as well as for the client's betterment. Because uh, only one approach will not work with everyone. Only talking will uh, would have never worked with everyone. Because I think before that, I was only counseling. It was only talking and certain techniques of, you know, counseling that, okay, do this. Uh, as I said, CBT and RBT mm-hmm. was the main center mm-hmm. where you have paper pencil thing to do or you have behavior modification you have given them a behavior modification so that you can observe so after chcp it has become more uh, interesting vibrant and open up a lot of uh, uh, solutions and uh, you know as i said interesting uh, techniques are uh, uh, the core thing of the course <clears throat> So, uh, how did these, uh, how did CHCP help you to overcome those challenges? So, if you have to say briefly, how would you? Um, so, uh, the best part of CHCP is, of course, it has the cognitive behavior therapy, one included. Mm-hmm. It also has a neuro-linguistic programming included mm-hmm. in the course and hypnosis, mm-hmm. of course, included in the mm-hmm. course. You are not just learning one therapy, but you are learning three therapy together and seeing the different different techniques. Um, mm-hmm. Also, uh, NLP has done a tremendous uh, effect on me and on my client because mm-hmm. you now know that you know one sentence you can use it ten times in a ten different ways. So if your hmm. client don't understand when you say straight away, you know how you're going to tell him, uh, my video yes. has gone, I don't know. So, uh, you know, there are 10 different ways uh, to tell, can uh, you tell your can I don't know why, what is what happened? Why video is gone? Uh, can you check your internet connection? Because I'm no, able to hear you. Yeah, that's what the internet connection is there. I don't know why video is not there. Can you log in again? Okay, fine. So meanwhile, if any one of you have any questions, ask us. Yes, we are working with the voice. There is a network issue by uh, Uja's side and we are working on that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Am I there? Fine. Yes. Okay. Perfect. I thought you don't like the background. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bright for me. <laughs> Perfect. So can you uh, tell us? Huh. I was saying about the techniques and... Um, hmm. um, yeah, so I was uh, coming to metaphor and NLP hmm. because uh, you hmm. know your client is not understanding when you are telling him to do or her to do something straight away which uh, hmm. sometimes works which sometimes doesn't work so now hmm. you know after learning NLP with CHCP that okay hmm. now there are 20 other ways you know you can tell them that okay fine if you cannot do this way can you do this or would you be able hmm. to do this or is it possible for you to do, if not this, then this? So, yeah. you definitely get an answer. So now, I I won't say I'm still expert. I'm still trying and learning and improving every day uh, using mm-hmm. this language pattern. And um, uh, that is giving a better uh, uh, result. Also, with THCP, we have learned metaphor. Hmm. So metaphor is also uh, one of the thing which uh, I think many of us uh, miss to look, uh, you know, into the client and his problem. 
he uh, mm. he's saying he's already telling us giving us the signs okay this is it but if we don't know what it means we are missing out mm. on it so metaphor is also one of the thing which has improved uh, my counseling as well as you know my skills and i am yes using it so uh, as you have mentioned earlier that you are a manager at a suicide helpline so can you tell yes. us that how do you use chcp in your suicide helplines or with your clients in that okay so uh, as uh, uh, this is a telephonic counseling this is not a direct counseling so um, we don't do hypnosis in this but uh, definitely of course you have expertise in metaphor and nlp that comes a handy when you are speaking to your client so your client <clears throat> tells you over the call lot of lot of thing and you uh, have to have that patience to listen to the caller very very intentively and make notes of it because that's what i do even if it's a call or if it is a face to face counseling i make sure to make notes of you know uh, uh, of the patients if i don't have a uh, uh, you know i don't have a pen or paper around handy i would make sure that uh, you know i would write it in my phone i have a notepad in my phone and i would write it into it so i always make notes and once i make the notes i get an idea okay he said this that means he is he some sometimes he said that you know i i like to be in dark so that means there's a sign he is telling you that he is in tremendous pain he is associating his pain to with with darkness so um when can i can you explain with uh, um can you explain us with a case study example yes <laughs> i knew <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh, there was a uh, caller uh, he called mm-hmm. and then he said uh, okay i am going to go die mm-hmm. and uh, just uh, have this recording nobody is responsible for my death and uh, uh i'm going to go die and give this recording and please don't harass my family for this mm-hmm. so <clears throat> uh my counselor couldn't handle it and he's like ma'am please come and talk to him he's not ready to listen mm-hmm. i said okay so i went and i spoke to him i said okay tell me what happened he's like no 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 nothing happened i just uh, don't want to talk i just want to go and die so i was like mm-hmm. fine if you want to die you can but you have called here my main uh, intention i um, this is my trick and you know, i i tell him uh, i every caller who is not who is always reluctant i tell see you have called here that means you seek a help mm-hmm. right if you are seeking a help and if you have called here hold on for a little while and tell me mm-hmm. everything and um after the call if you feel that okay this you are not getting your solution you mm-hmm. can always take a decision so i think that somehow everybody listens that and agrees on that and uh, right. uh, this person explained everything about his problem which he had with his parents and with his wife his wife was uh, not uh, staying with him because they had an argument so she went to her parents's place he was living with his parents but uh, his parents uh, he had issues with his parents as well that he doesn't do anything just be at home and hmm. um, other stuff so uh, he's like nobody's ready to understand nobody wants to sort out the issues i said okay fine are you in a position that uh, we can speak to your parents and you know try to hmm. sort this matter out so then he agrees on that he gave us hmm. the number we tried hmm. to conference but uh, uh he did not receive the call so he made a uh, so now here what i see is that he wanted a solution he wanted mm-hmm. someone to talk to his parents his family and he wanted that he should be saved so uh he made a con call we spoke to his mm-hmm. parents and his parents mm-hmm. were like after listening to the statement that he's uh, you know he, he wants to uh, commit his uh, 
uh, he wants to end his life so um, hmm. his parents were uh, very emotional and it was very overwhelming on the phone and still they were like do you understand what will we do they again they, they shouted at him that uh, you hmm. know don't do something stupid just come home we are here with you or go to your wife's home and bring her back so um he's like okay so first this happened they uh, first fought with each other and then they accepted with each other uh, accepted hmm. each other that okay fine uh, we'll try to sort out the issue so his parents were out of the conference and then he again spoke to me and he is like thank you uh, you know we could i i know madam apne bahut mere ko ujha ke rakha hai कि दो मिनट रुक जाओ एक मिनट रुक जाओ बोले आपने मेरे साथ बहुत बड़ा ट्रिक किया पर थैंक यू मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा कि आपने इस तरह से मेरे से बात की एंड देन ही थैंक द लॉट एंड देन ही हैंग अप सो व्हाट आई सी हियर इज दैट दैट वन मोमेंट वेयर यू जस्ट आस्क हिम टू होल्ड ऑन फॉर अ वाइल वेल वेर यू नो टेक्टफुली यू टेल यू हैव सेड समथिंग i have heard you now i have to say something you hear me out if you find that this is not working out then you can take your call so they agree on that and uh, it's working i think uh, so far we have 100% ratio all our callers are alive oh wow that's so beautiful uh, doctor has asked that um, how can we recognize that the person is having suicidal thoughts okay so there is a, a dax suicide intention scale as well which you can always follow and try to mm-hmm. find out the intensity of the uh, suicidal ideation also people um, give you a lot of signs uh, mm-hmm. when they talk they will not talk directly about committing or ending their life but they may tell you ki yaar जिंदगी तो एकदम खराब हो गया मजा नहीं आ रहा है इससे तो अच्छा है यार मर जाना अब इससे तो क्या ही बुरा देखना है इससे तो मर जाना ही अच्छा है ये माय लाइफ इज माय लाइफ इज बोले से माय लाइफ इज डेवास्टेटेड माय लाइफ हैज नो मीनिंग माय लाइफ इट डजेंट मैटर माय लाइफ डजेंट मैटर टू एनी वन इट डजेंट मेक सेंस इफ आई लिव और डाई नो बडी विल इवन विप अबाउट इट um so signs like this where there is no will to leave and a person has hmm. left he um stops of course the signs of depression also you may notice in a person who has a suicidal um ideation not everybody is depressed uh but people who are having the intense thoughts towards the suicide will have these signs where they will be least interested towards living towards doing anything and you know about their self improvement as well but back the uh, suicide intent scale is the key to find out that how uh, in severe the person is mm. thinking how severely he is thinking about committing uh, suicide mm. and uh, dr veena pandey has also asked can you please explain us about metaphor i was trying to escape <laughs> now you're caught uh, i'm i'm very confused how do i keep my camera because i only see myself half uh, um, anyway this so is, this is perfect okay so uh, metaphor metaphor is not the literal uh, meaning if somebody is telling you something mm-hmm. which is not direct they are telling you things with uh, examples they will not tell you that ki mujhe ye ho raha hai या मैं ऐसे करूंगा बट 
I don't know how do I I I should give this example. I'm unable to explain this metaphor, but uh, 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 Sushant Singh uh, Rajput, which is a very uh, hot topic mm-hmm. these days, and I really you know pay my respect to his uh, decision. But I was going through his uh, this uh, Instagram profile, and I. Uh, came across that he was talking about lot of stuff. He was talking about physics. So as in general, uh, th- because this is a classic exa- example and the best example I can give for metaphor. He has uh, one of his posts on a, a light on a dark universe, hmm. where uh, there is a photo of Earth which has a blue light at the end and the yellow light at the top. He talks about hmm. pure physics in this. Pure physics. Hmm. If he wouldn't hmm. have uh, uh, taken this decision, or if he wouldn't be um, uh, dead right now, we wouldn't be even knowing that. Okay, he had this uh, ideation, or he was in a trauma, or he was feeling sad, or uh, hmm. he was not well. That uh, uh, post clearly talks about dark energy you know and the physics so where you just see that okay ha ah, this is it but if you being very attentive where you find negative words even a single negative word word uh, hmm. which says dark or stress or irritation or anger i have anger issues so hmm. that's a very uh, obvious but when somebody says that uh, uh, you know I see that the red color is appearing in front of me, and I feel like doing, you know, that two red color. That finish that red color. That means she is feeling angry. That's uh, uh, so. Uh, the metaphor can not be so uh, obvious. It it will always be indirect, which will take you to think in a very uh, Like you have to be very sharp uh, to identify that it is uh, he is going towards the right direction or a wrong direction. Because while even uh, in the sessions uh, they say that they are improving, but their behavior is uh, on uh, you know the otherwise. So you have to if if it's a face to face. You have to make sure that the behavior and the thought process goes together. Even the behavior can be used as a metaphor. I don't know if I answered this question, but I hope I did. So, um, Akansha Shivastava has asked that: How can I take counseling from online? I am new in this field. How can I? Take counseling online. He's new in this uh, field. Okay, so how can you do online counseling? That's what the question is. Not even the face to face, but the call and the video call. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. how? I mean, you. Okay. So, um, see, if you have cl, you are new. So maybe people know you or people don't know you. You can only work with reference. You. Uh, uh, hmm. And with the reference, also, if people have doctors, basically doctors have faith in you, or doctors know you, or your professors uh, know you, where you have studied, they will refer you. And because this is a pandemic, everyone would love to or like to have an online counseling session. So that's how you can start. But I think you should be in contact with people who are practicing right now. Shadow them, learn from them, and you can uh, start uh, your online counseling. Maybe once you are confident enough to take this up. Okay. And can you say how do you do online counseling? If that could help her. How I do? Um, frankly speaking, I make. Sh- I mean, I I don't uh, much. Uh, Uh, do online counseling these days because I um, I'm working and I have a very limited time, so I prefer not to. But whenever I do, whenever calls I I take, I only uh, speak over the call. I don't. I if somebody prefers that video calling, then I do. Otherwise, I do uh, uh, only uh, audio call. They 
talk and as i said you know the talking therapy over the call that helps because that's the basic and primary uh, relief of the uh, their uh, emotions which is uh, bothering them at least that has been expressed so 50% they are okay and from the second session i start giving them homework and uh, 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 activities to do so that you know when we have a, a scheduled call after four days or after a week then i ask them okay now you self assess yourself what have you done what have you not done or you know what are the results you have got if you have done and uh if you have not done what happened so that is how i do i keep it more uh, of activity based so i hope that answers your question um bharat that there are so many psychology related groups on facebook so yes you can surely join certain groups on facebook and yes question is um what are uh, how is it important psychologists to know about cgt it is very important <laughs> okay it is very important because it is very effective uh hmm. a very effective process personally what i think because not hmm. everyone would like the idea or not everyone would agree on that because everyone has a different different segment everybody is uh, uh, attitude towards the work is different my attitude is different where i i like uh, doing different things there are people who follow the tradition there are people who follow you know certain things only but thcp i think everyone should and i mean all the psychologists at least do at least two levels of the thcp just not even not for the clients but for themselves because it helps a lot in uh, the self development as well yes it does so my last question to you is that what are your future plans <laughs> okay so as uh, i said i'm working with this uh, organization that, that has given me a tremendous exposure so definitely i would want to do something for my organization which is gvk mri and uh, you know mm-hmm. try to give my best uh, as uh, you know in the suicide prevention area apart from that as, at a personal level career level i have like maybe not recently uh, in a far future i have seen uh, that you know i would want to have a my center along with my friends who are also from the different uh, segment but i want to include chcp and different segment of art performing art where uh, you know a client comes and he has all uh, inclusive therapy or a counseling area or a place to feel themselves if they want to perform there is a uh, you know in the center there is a place they can perform or there is someone who would help them to perform or you know guide them or just be with them to you know not feel them alone that they are performing alone there can be someone to perform with them it could be dance it could be singing it could be uh, instrumental it could be anything or maybe someone just wants to come and uh, you know express themselves as an emotional like uh, as an actor you know as a theater uh, uh, exercise they can do that and express their emotion Uh, in that center then they can come for the therapy of course we at city definitely <laughs> beautiful <laughs> um, yeah so that's a dream center i have in my mind right now beautiful so if any one of you have any questions you are welcome to talk to us and uh, thank you urja for your inputs and your tremendous beautiful insights and uh, i would also like to thank our audience for asking us so many beautiful and i will see you all um, next wednesday and we will be in a uh, conversation with a coffee trainer so stay tuned thank you so much sanjana thank you so much i charles and i would i'm like it's it's really nice how much ever i thank uh, i charles or nitin for being a mentor always there 
so thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to interact with lot of people with you so wonderful human being you are always there to listen me out and uh, thank you audience yes for asking me questions i was hoping i will not 